Hello and welcome to another video in the series of What's the Diagnosis? This is another digital slide from the Joint Pathology Centre's online database. All I know is that it's tissue from a cat. So first of all, uh, we have to decide what organ this is. We have what looks like a bronchus here and lots of air spaces, so this is a section of lung. And we can immediately start to pick out some areas of abnormality at lower power. It's very purple around here. This looks like an interesting area of inflammation. There's another one here, another one here. A lot of the alveolar air spaces are collapsed. So there's a couple of areas that we can look at. Let's just have a little look at this bronchus here. So it looks like a lot of the epithelium has come off, but I think this is an artifact or a post-mortem change. If we have a look at the bronchiolar epithelial cells, they still have lots of cilia on them, which means that they were very healthy. So I think this is just artifactual separation of the epithelium from the bronchus. So that's not as interesting as it looked like at low power. There's quite a lot of glandular tissue here. Maybe some more lymphocytes, but it's not looking as interesting as something like this underneath. So as we start to head into the lung, this is looking very abnormal. Rather than having nice big alveolar air spaces, uh, all of that air space is instead filled with lots of inflammatory cells. We've got these big chaps here with lots of cytoplasm and, and, and big nuclei. These are macrophages, probably the resident alveolar macrophages. We're starting to see some neutrophils creeping in as well. These smaller, multi-lobed, kind of smeary nuclei here. And then some more bad news, this eosinophilic fibrillar material is fibrin, so the, the, the protein that clots in the blood. Uh, and you tend to get fibrin leaking out of vessels when they're damaged or the vessels have become very leaky and, and the fibrin kind of exudes out into the tissue around it. So here we're heading into one of the more intense areas of inflammation that we saw at lower power and we can see a blood vessel here and then immediately surrounding that blood vessel we've got a similar picture of lots of macrophages and neutrophils um, they're expanding the vessel wall and this here this kind of amorphous eosinophilic material within the vessel wall it's what we'd call fibrinoid necrosis. Uh, it happens when protonaceous fluid accumulates within the vessel wall. So rather than being a pneumonia of, or, a, or a primary pneumonia, this could well be a vasculitis where the main disease process is affecting the blood vessels uh, and there's inflammation within the blood vessel walls. So let's have a little mosey on round and see what else we can see. And it's really quite spectacular, you know. Look at these macrophages, they are huge and really nice examples. Cats have very angry macrophages. So this little bit's interesting as well. This is quite a large artery, you know, you could imagine the wall was about this thick and now it's just expanded by all of that inflammatory infiltrates. And then within the blood vessel, there's more fibrin. So I'm starting to think whether or not there might be some thrombi somewhere around some blood clots within the vessels, which is really bad news. Well, I mean, obviously it was never going to be good news because we've got part of this uh, 
cat's lung on a slide so it's obviously not not alive anymore i mean this is what i was kind of hoping to find this looks like a blood vessel here and then you can kind of make out this fibrilla eosinophilic stuff in it uh, this looks like a thrombus within a blood vessel so there's just one more thing that we should check before we check out uh, we should have a little look at the pleura which is the lining of the lung and to me it looks like it's kind of difficult to tell here whether the inflammation is affecting the pleura whether it's just kind of spilling out from this blood vessel and whether this accumulation of fibrin and inflammation is it's causing a pleuritis as well as a pneumonia and a vasculitis hey look at this that looks like a thrombus as well there's big accumulation of fibrin with some cells trapped in it i guess this was probably a blood vessel once as well what a beautiful slide so just to summarize we have lots of macrophages and neutrophils within a lot of the alveoli and then also mainly affecting blood vessels with necrosis of the blood vessel wall uh, vasculitis and thrombosis of smaller blood vessels now i'm not sure about the history of this cat but the first thing that i would think of with uh, macrophages and neutrophils so a pyogranulomatous vasculitis in a cat would be a feline infectious peritonitis feline infectious peritonitis is re relatively common infectious disease of cats uh, caused by a coronavirus coronavirus is very common within mammals feline coronavirus is no exception and it's a ubiquitous virus every cat is affected by feline coronavirus every now and then the feline coronavirus mutates and acquires the ability to infect macrophages uh, FIP itself can manifest in a variety of different ways um, there tends to be it can be chronic it can be acute it can affect the brain the eyes the lungs as the name suggests it tends to affect the peritoneum so the lining of the abdominal cavity so that was a lovely case of feline infectious peritonitis with some beautiful lesions and uh, some very nice examples of angry cat macrophages hopefully i'll get time to make another one of these videos soon uh, in the meantime you can check out the other videos on the channel which deal with the normal histology of a wide variety of different species so until next time goodbye <laughs>